Arter and Next family, the celebration continues here on Arter Days, and we are igniting the blockchain. Crypto Woman here, otherwise known as Elizabeth, with William Pacheco. William has been part of the NXT community for quite a while now, and it's a pleasure to see your face and uh, introduce you um, to the rest of the community as a as a person. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Elizabeth. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, I've been a part of the NXT community for about, I want to say, two years now. Um, I'm located in South Korea. Um, I got interested in NXT. Um, well, originally, I got interested in crypto for trading purposes and making money and stuff like that. But um, I really got interested in NXT while I was doing my master's degree, and I was researching um, South Korea's Information Network Village program. And basically what that program was, was a way for South Korea to get internet technology into rural areas and into villages and allow the farmers and the local growers and producers of those areas to get their products out to a wider network, both within Korea and worldwide. And uh, also just improving, uh, improving everybody's quality of life through, you know, it, webcam talks and stuff like that. But basically, while I was writing my master's and I was investing in Bitcoin at the same time, I was looking for a solution that could help me with that and uh, make a help me make a proposal to um, my university and others um, to integrate blockchain type stuff with uh, official development assistance, which is what the program that I did for my master's. So basically NXT was the perfect product for that. I could not find anything else at the time back in 2016 that was better than that. And even to this day, actually, which is really surprising, I have yet to actually find something better than NXT and by extension Arter um for this purpose well you know that that fascinates me we 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 talk about um how the blockchain um will influence big finance banking that whole sector the, the financial sector but part of my interest too into the blockchain is how it can impact um, rural communities and mm -hmm. uh, stimulate economic um, growth and development in areas that are largely underdeveloped and um mm -hmm. So I'm really interested in hearing more about, uh, yeah, about that. Well, yeah, um, I can go more in depth uh, with that. And uh, basically, um, with the way the project was executed in Korea, there were village information centers. And there was a program a long time ago called Semal Undong, which is basically the new village movement. Um, and they basically revitalized every part of Korea back in the 1970s. And... Korea, um, at one point, Korea was the poorest nation in the world. Mm -hmm. And through this program, they were able to basically bring themselves up from nothing to being a powerhouse, an economic powerhouse these days. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, once they no longer had to borrow money from the OECD, from the UN, um, they were obligated now to become a donor and to basically get their program out to other uh, I want to say developing nations um, and help them grow their economies and improve quality of life for their people. So this is the way that they're using, you know, their expertise to help others grow. With that said, um, once you get into these villages, obviously um, one aspect of that program back in the 1970s was getting resources, getting cement, getting wood, um, executing and taking votes on potential projects to use these materials to build stuff uh, that would improve the quality of life for the villagers. So with this, we have a fair and immutable system. Now, voting needs to be fair. A woman's vote needs to count as much as a man's vote. Right. A vote needs to you know, be able to not be erased. Um, with a lot of these developing nations, you have a lot of people who either do not trust or cannot trust their government. And we need a system that can, you know, basically prove that voting has been fair um, for the marketplace. We need ways to connect these local villages to the market. Now, 
I've noticed and I've read a lot of cases where in Africa, they'll use, they have these cell phone systems that they use to try to get market prices for fruits and vegetables. But with the blockchain, that can be discovered much quicker. Mm -hmm. um, and not only that, you've got the blockchain messaging systems. Um, and the blockchain messaging system really, uh, I find it that it would actually be really, really good to use with uh, village meeting minutes, um, you know, keeping a log and a, a record of what goes on in local village meetings and uh, official documents and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, when I think about the marketplace, when I think about voting, when I think about logistics systems um, and messaging, and then even uh, micro loans and creating secondary currencies and stuff like that to basically create wider trade networks for people. There's only one thing that has all that, and that really is NXT and by extension Arbor. Yeah. Um, when you talk about microloans in some of these um, developing nations, one of the things that I've been fascinated with from the beginning is proving land ownership, because in mm. a lot of these developing nations, land has been owned for generations and generations in the past, from, you know, right. through families, but there's no um, record of it. So right. if a landowner who could be a wealthy landowner with, comes up with an entrepreneurial idea to improve his life and his community's life, approaches a bank for a development loan, for instance, and right. has no collateral and no proof of ownership for the, this land, then right. um, he, he's lost. He's Actually, yeah. That's a, a, a big stagnation point right now for development in a lot of countries. Right. So I think that um, putting land ownership, improving collateral, um, on a blockchain would be an ideal too. Absolutely. It, it would absolutely be um, something that's very necessary. And not only that, um, especially with microloans, accountability, basically showing that or having the person who received the loan prove that they spent it correctly, you know, on what they were supposed to spend it on and stuff like that. Um, accountability systems, proof of ownership systems, you know, I, I noticed with Jellerita and uh, Austria, they're working on ID systems with Austria and stuff like that. Um, all of this stuff is really, really necessary to bring these rural areas into the 21st century. And you know, I, I'm repeating myself, but NXT provides that package. Um, <laughs> and, as much as you want. Yeah. <laughs> and when you when you basically have something, and Jellerita was very, very generous. In my opinion, Jellerita was very generous because it's not just that NXT is open source. They released the blockchain creation kit, yeah. which basically made it so much easier to get pilot programs like this started and modified and stuff. And I think that Jellerita doesn't get enough credit for what they've done mm -hmm. for you know, communities and the world as a whole because there are a lot of projects that are just, I don't want to say selfish, but there are a lot of projects that don't provide that kind of assistance. And there's nothing like NXT out there. Right. And, you know, we all talk about, um, not we all, but some of us really believe that the blockchain is going to make the world a better place. And it gets down sometimes to the nitty gritty on how it can really help economic development right. in these areas. And if we, uh, if we will withhold that information from them and don't make it accessible, there's there's no way they can get started. But yeah, the web the the links right on jellerita.com. Anybody can go download it. Boom, it's right. theirs uh, to play with. We've talked about testing it, but actually to start um, applying it and making use cases, like you said, start taking your village meeting minutes on it and you know right. sharing it with everybody. Um, yeah, it's it's it is pretty remarkable what they've done. Um, you know. We're having a conversation about um, use cases in, in a way that can really help um, solve some real social and economic problems in the world instead mm -hmm. of make people rich or businesses flow easier, which is a good application. And it reminds me of one of the things that I like, and, and that's proven supply chain. And, um, and, and like you were talking transparency, because a lot of these rural areas, part of their um, economic depression is they're susceptible to things like um, corruption to Absolutely. labor to you know we talk about you know the the slave labor and um that that's still going on in the world today and in in very long supply chains um in products that are delivered to us um in in the in the first world countries oftentimes way back in that supply chain it's murky 
and things yes, it's very easy for money to fall through the cracks and slave trading and things like that. But if we had a, a transparent, immutable, accountable supply chain record, it, that would solve a lot of problems in my mind. So I can't wait for that to happen. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I'm not big on the programming side, but I can't imagine based on the tools that Jellerita's already produced within NXT, I can't imagine that it would be too difficult to implement. Either. No, I, I I believe the tools are right there. We it's it's fully featured. It's a fully featured right. blockchain, <laughs> um, and just download it and see. And now Ardor is also um, you know fully featured too. But like you said, the entry point for NXT for people that don't need to create a child chain for themselves because not everybody needs their own blockchain. Some people right. um, they don't, or they can use the, the the existing platform, or they can get um, their own dedicated private. Um, well, what, what's interesting about Ardor is when I originally looked at uh, Next and NXT, um, I was only looking at it at the village level. But mm -hmm. then when I thought about what Jellerito is doing with Ignis and Ardor, Ardor Next feels like, you know, a village level or a local level type project. Mm -hmm. But Ardor feels more national because then each village has their own child chain. Um, mm -hmm. Each city has their own child chain connected within a national network so um that's definitely something that's very you know lucrative and important in my eyes now i'm sure you could do a national chain on uh nxt but it definitely seems like more of a, a use case for ardor there right right and that's the amazing thing is that that now that we have two products to deliver we can find different use cases and different applications for each one um, absolutely you know we've got it covered guys right i, I, I know i you know, when you look at the the whole cryptocurrency market, there's so many projects. I I cannot believe how many projects that do not have a product and have multi billion dollar valuations. It blows my mind um, how that's even happening. Like I get it, I get speculation, I understand how markets work and stuff like that. But to have something where you know, one thing that Jellerita did that's both good and maybe a little bad was they underpromised and they overdelivered, which is how things should be. You should underpromise right. and overdeliver. And um, a lot of people overpromise and underdeliver. And then when you've got these people hyped up and they're stuck as bag holders, well, your your market cap is staying high because those people don't want to sell. Right. So um, with Jellerita and Ardor being very fair, especially with the Ignis uh, airdrop and token sale and all that. I I cannot think of a more honest project in the cryptocurrency sphere than what Jellerita is doing right now. You know, and we hear that over and over and over, the integrity of this project, the integrity of the development, you know, uh, the, the developers, which is Jellerita. And, um, and, you know, we, let's talk about hype a little bit, you know? Sure. Because it you know, hype in the cryptocurrency world seem to go hand in hand. You know, hype really moves these markets, doesn't it? And um, I absolutely agree. one of the things that I really appreciate is that um, sometimes it seems like uh, the NXT Ardor community has actually gone out of their way to avoid hype. Um, mm, that's it, true. It, and that's part of their um, maybe the the commitment of the developers and the community. To, to deliver a full product and not, and, and to let the product prove itself rather than, than hype it. And you know, I know that disappoints some people, you know, when, when we don't get that high market cap or that high valuation um, instantly. But I think when it, we, I think when it actually starts happening, it's going to be solid and it's going to stay around. You know what I mean? Because you, because we have the fundamentals. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? You're a trade. I, I, I totally, I totally agree. Um, Next has been a project that's been around for four years. Proof of stake has been around for four years, um, and not just proof of stake. Now, Next wasn't the first with proof of stake, but they were the first with full proof of stake. And um, this is the type of thing where it's interesting because you've got projects like Ethereum that still haven't you know, put in proof of stake. They've promised it for so long, but proof of stake still isn't there. They're going to promise uh, sharding and child chains with plasma and stuff like that, but who knows when they're going to come up with that. But we don't have a lot of people, because I am one of the moderators on the subreddit, the Ardor and NXT subreddit. Thank you for your work. We, 
and right. we we don't have um, a lot of people making memes and stuff like that. We're I don't want to say we're a serious project, but you know we're not a joke. There are some projects that are just a joke out there. Mm -hmm. um, and with hype, um, you know, you've got a lot of people out there who do hype. You've got John McAfee on Twitter. You've got, uh, you know, but now you've got this whole accusation of chills for Verge and stuff like that. Um, you've got a lot of brigading and on Reddit. You've got a lot of paid chills. You've got a lot of pumpers. You've got pump groups and stuff like that. So I'm actually very glad because every subreddit says the same thing. They want organic growth for their coin. And Ardor has shown very, very good signs of organic growth. Um, Jellerita did the right thing of uh, basically putting up the, the test net and letting people see their progress over time. Whereas like you've got projects like Lisk and you've got people in the Lisk suburb saying, you know, guys, just give us a beta, give us some proof that side chains are real, you know, give us something that we can see. Is there something about the SDK that you can update us with? And they do have a GitHub repository that you can check out, but they don't really have a proof of concept. Ardor's been sitting, Joe Reed has been sitting on the proof of concept for Ardor for about a year, and they could have launched it earlier if they wanted to, but they really did do their best to basically have the product ready. And now the hype train could come. We'll see. We'll see how it works. But um, no matter what, whenever you get into any type of, you know, internet fight with somebody on the internet, if you've got the product and they don't, the argument's over, you know? So it's very easy to defend and back up Ardor and Gelarita and what they're doing. And when you get into a very serious conversation with other blockchain enthusiasts about their project, if their project has no product, the conversation doesn't go very far. Right, and, and, and we are, we, ha we have delivered and we are ready to deliver um, an enhanced product, which is going to, um, right, um, applied to even more use cases. Um, you know, William, trading, it's an mm, yes. topic, right? <laughs> and you, know, you know what? Actually, I believe NXT is actually number one on Poloniex right now. They went up 40% today. That is um, unbelievable. You know, everybody's talking about, oh, NXT is going to die. It's dead. Well, it did. We, we did have a retracement, which is really, really normal after we have such a meteoric rise, right? But yeah, absolutely. it's found a support and, you know, 60, mid 60s. And maybe, I mean, I'm talking sense there. I don't, yeah, I'm not minding sense instead of Satoshi's, but maybe you can tell us about that. Um, you know, especially with, NXT's rise um, in the subreddits. I see a lot of sad, you know, upset people who were upset with uh, Jellerita. And they're like, what are you going to do about the price? And the Jellerita doesn't control the price, guys. Right. Um, when you decide, now remember, NXT was five and a half cents around that range in November. It was 600 something Satoshis. And if you decided to get in, you know, and you just heard about NXT, and we know why people got into NXT. It was for Ignis, okay? Right. And you decide to get in after, you know, a 3,000% rise or whatever it did. Um, you can't be surprised by a correction, you know? Right. And if you got in early enough, we're at the 5,000 sat range or something like that right now. Um, we were at 3,000 sats, but even if we were at the bottom of this correction at 3,000 sats, you're still looking at like four to five times what we were the previous month in Satoshi's alone. And you're still looking at 1000% growth in dollar value in one month. And this is actually NXT's price now after the Ignis uh, airdrop has already occurred. And I find that to be absolutely amazing. Um, now, regarding the price, if people are holding, if you bought at the top and you sold before Ignis dropped, that I don't have nothing to say except for that sucks for you, okay? But if you did hold on to Ignis and you've still got your NXT, you're going to be okay. I don't think that people really need to worry about this. I experienced the drop during um, the initial Ardor snapshot, which was, I think it was over like three months or something like that. It was a really, really long time. And at one point, 
um, maybe halfway through NXT started declining because Monero was mooning, some other coins were mooning at the time, and people just wanted to jump over to that. And, you know, that's just kind of like fair weather supporters and fair weather friends and stuff like that. But I held through, and, you know, long story short, NXT and Ardor have helped make me very, very financially independent. You know, there are that there are those benefits on top of the benefits of supporting a great blockchain project. Right. Um, if you look at the valuations of other projects, you've got Bitcoin Gold, you've got Lisk, you've got Cardano, you've got a few other projects that don't really have a real product yet. And if you compare their valuation with Ardor's, um, Ardor should be much higher. Ignis should be much higher. Ignis futures actually are really, really high right now. Um, I don't think you're going to be disappointed over time for any of the traders out there, for any of the people who did buy the top. You're going to be okay. It might take a while, but um, if you hold, everything's going to be fine. There's nothing so, to worry about. I, I, I wonder if some of the people that are complainers aren't used to being holders. <laughs> they might actually... I, don't, I don't think they're used to being holders because... It, if you look at it, it really was kind of a pump and dump where people were just trying to get Ignis at the last minute. And there's a lot of new money. I'm not going to call it stupid money, but there's a lot of new money in this space. And it's all swirling around, jumping from coin to coin, looking for any reason to invest. And they haven't done their homework. Um, I don't think that they've really looked into the fundamentals of certain projects. So I really wish people would do that more. The one thing that I've been advising my friends to do, um, I don't push my friends to necessarily invest in NXT or Ardor, but I, they do ask me what's a good coin out there. I'm like, guys, any project that you get into, download the wallet first, okay? And they downloaded the next wallet or they used the web wallet, which was available before, you know, Generator took it down because of scammers and stuff like that. Um, and they realized there is nothing that compares to the NXT and Ardor wallets. Right. Every other coin, I don't wanna say every other, but a lot of other coins, especially ones that were not NXT forks, um, it's just sending sending coins from one wallet to another. There's not much functionality in it. And there's really just nothing as robust. And then after they use it, they're just like, I'm sold, I get it. So, um, you know, people just need to actually do due diligence on the projects, check roadmaps, don't just follow TA. But even if you did follow TA, you should have realized that it was going to dump because yeah. it did go parabolic like that. So um, if you just stick with good projects, you're going to basically make money over time. I think, though, that if you are going to enter into this little hobby of day trading and following yes. the hypes, that you should know a little bit about TA. <laughs> yeah, oh, I agree. To, you should know how to recognize good entry and good exit points and never go into a trade without a good exit strategy. That'll right. really help a lot, right? So I think a little education, even in technical analysis, would be helpful for people. I totally agree. Yeah. yeah. But... Uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. I, I do feel bad for people. Um, I've learned my lessons the hard way. I bet you can tell some stories too, you know. I, I, do, I do feel bad for people who are chasing a pump. Mm. But if you really do care about this project, really, you're going to be fine. There's nothing, there's nothing to worry about, you know. Learn to be patient. Learn to hold that bag. And right. uh, I, I think they'll be better than fine, actually, William. <laughs> oh no, I I do think they're going to be better than fine. Yeah. yeah there's, you've got what is essentially, I don't want to, you know, DAP is more of an Ethereum term, but let's go ahead and put it here. With Ignis, you have a DAP that has the features of like 10 different Ethereum DAPs combined into one, integrated into the wallet of the parent chain. And with the Ardor wallet, you've got basically a parent chain wallet that integrates all the other DAPs. There's nothing like that. It is absolutely a revolutionary project. People want to talk about blockchain 3.0. We're the first there. And, you know, although I don't want to focus too much on hype, actually, I'm pretty hyped about this. I'm really excited about this. I've been on Twitter. I've been tweeting people. Um, you know, people should be excited about this product. And I think that people are going to realize that over time. Now, I do every once in a while. I check the forums. The, the cafes over here, the online forums in Korea, and the Koreans are getting it. The Koreans right. do realize that having a product is important. They do realize that, you know, government integration is important. 
Um, the latest that, like the Arda Euro or the AEUR chain with the fiat backing and stuff, that's huge. You oh, know, yeah. that's absolutely huge to have a fiat backing on a decentralized exchange. So over time, it's going to come um, as these projects basically reach their deadlines and they haven't met their deadlines and they've pushed, you know, their product off people are going to realize maybe those teams can't come up with what's happening and we need to actually be smart about our money and invest in projects that have a product or can produce. You know, it, it's interesting because um, I think that the cryptocurrency um, phenomenon is attracting a whole different kind of breeders, the entry level or traders. It's it, the entry level is low basically yes. compared to like a stock market investment, right. but nobody enters a stock investment without doing some research into the fundamentals. No. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Well, maybe there are some, but, but yeah. it's a pretty standard practice, right? To absolutely. Not just, not just um, read it on in your entry and decision, but to read the updates. And if right. you have an investment in a stock you are going to stay up on the fundamentals and the project and where it's going. But it seems like um, because the entry level is so low, you know, you can go out with a hundred dollars and enter into the crypto scene. And if you, if you pick a winner on any given day, you might really increase that, but you can always increase it. And those increases could have been motivated and spurred by the hype and right not every project's going to be like that. Some of them are going to be slower and steadier and deliver on the fundamentals. And that's where right. we if you If you are chasing a pump though, let's say you did buy into Arter at $100 and you've lost half your money. There are other coins out there that'll do 10X. You know, you could still take your $50, go somewhere else and turn it into 500, turn it back into 100. It's really not that hard, um, especially yeah. when you're working with lower amounts of capital. So, um, I, I actually feel like we have some trolls. I know that there are some people saying, oh, I put my life savings here. You know, my life savings is gone now. And I can't believe that anybody would be that reckless with their life savings right. to throw it into any coin. It's not about, you know, Next or Art or anything like that, but mm -hmm. just to go into any coin or any investment when it went parabolic like that. And, you know, people just, if they got, you know, burned that way, I'm sorry, but that, you know, that happens and you need to do your due diligence, yeah. both in technical oh, analysis and fundamentals and all that. Do not trade with money that you cannot afford to lose. Absolutely. It's totally a risky agree. place. And if you don't know what you're doing, you even stand greater chances to lose if right. you're not practiced. I yeah. totally agree. Yeah. Wow. It's fun to talk to you because you have so many uh, insights from so many different directions. I wonder if that's because you... Uh, get to monitor threads like Reddit and are a vast source of information. I, I am. I'm on the Slack. I'm on Reddit. I'm on Twitter. Um, I'm open to, you know, checking out other coins. I don't necessarily, you know, try to attack other coins. I try to get insight from other coins. I try to see if, you know, somebody's doing something better than Arter. Um, you know, how are they doing? You know, and a lot of coins, I will say, they do marketing really well. You know, there are a lot of coins that have great marketing. Um, a lot of these coins, uh, they have very young faces representing them. Um, they've got exciting backstories and stuff. And, you know, that's something that I hope that Jellerita can, you know, work on and get one day. Um, but it's really, really interesting just to see how everybody there's people from all walks of life in cryptocurrency now. It's becoming much, much more mainstream. Even in South Korea, I believe it's uh, one in three office workers in South Korea are now in cryptocurrency. One in and, three? Wow. Yeah, it's absolutely huge over here. And that's why you hear these things about the government, you know, trying to ban exchanges, which is not happening. They're not trying to ban exchanges over here. Um, and they don't want kids, you know, trading cryptocurrencies and stuff like that. So I understand why regulations need to happen. But um, every country has their own cryptocurrency culture, which is amazing. And then you've got cryptocurrency culture in general on Reddit and on Twitter. And that's also, it's really fascinating. I could easily see, you know, a college course being created on this because 
the way things evolve and the way hype cycles are created and stuff like that, that is definitely something that's going to be studied at some point in the future. I, I agree with you. We need more education on it for sure. Um, cool. We definitely do. But uh, yeah, it is fun to talk with you. I know you've already imparted so many words of advice and wisdom here in this conversation, <laughs> but is there any last words that you would like to give people who are entering this space? Um, um, you know, other than doing your due diligence, um, don't, I want to advise people, don't invest in promises. If you do want to invest in promises, only invest in projects that have proven that they can deliver on, pa or that they've delivered on past promises. Mm -hmm. um, then you have a better idea of their ability to, ability to deliver on future promises. Um, but there's so many scam ICOs out there. Um, but, you know, if I had to, like I said, and I know that, you know, it's a bit of shilling, but guys, hold some ardor. Hold some ardor. Hold some Ignis. It is a solid project. You know, the, the next team, they've been around for four years. They're pioneers. They're pioneers in child chains. They were pioneers in proof of stake. Um, they're, they're very generous with, you know, creating the, the NXT blockchain creation kit. This is a very solid team. This is a very solid organization. And you really cannot go wrong holding some of this coin. This is absolutely a must buy in my opinion. Right. Well, I, we'll see more of you. I know we will. Absolutely. I'm going to be around. Um, Nova Damon, is that how you pronounce your handle? Uh, yeah, Nova Damon is fine, yes. Yep. And, and that is uh, William about everywhere. So look yes. him up and follow him. He, uh, you can tell he's a reasonable, level-headed guy who has lots of good insight. So thanks, thanks for sharing that with us today, William. And you have a happy new year. Yes, you too. Happy new year. Okay. Yep. Bye. Bye-bye.